Hey friends, we are doing a couple random projects today, but I am starting with horseradish, horseradish. And I asked my husband this year, I said, if there was one thing I could grow that you would like me to try that I haven't already, what would it be? And he thought about it and his answer was horseradish, which, okay. <laughs> so I did a little bit of research about horseradish and I went online to try and find some and it was very expensive at nurseries and things. Um, I did go on Etsy and I found someone selling it on Etsy and that's where I ended up buying it from. I got a two pound horseradish root and I think I wanna pay, I think I paid like $16 or something for it. So I'm gonna go ahead and open that up and we're gonna get it planted today so that Brent can make himself some horseradish in the fridge um, for next year. All right, let's check her out. Okay, this is my package that I got from Daylily Nursery. I bought this on Etsy. It is horseradish root, and I'm a little upset because there is a fungus gnat inside the bag already. That ain't good. All right, well, let's see what we're working with here. Ooh. So this is the smallest I could get it, and it's two pounds. I think that's too much horseradish. It is wrapped really nice. It's very moist. Woo! In paper. Look at that. A couple fungus gnats, not too many. And look, she is sprouting. Wow. All right. I have never planted horseradish before. It is getting a little bit of mold on it. I did leave it in this wet paper a couple days after I got it, which I probably shouldn't have done. So I'm going to go ahead and plant this whole thing, I think. Okay. This is the pot that I have found. Oh, it's a bad size. It has got some of this in here for drainage. Um, it's got holes at the bottom. And I'm going to go ahead and fill most of it up, put that horseradish root in, and then cover it up. So I did do a little research on horseradish because I am no expert. And what it said to do was to take the top third to half and cut it to use in the kitchen. And I'd assume I'm gonna use this part in the kitchen too. And then plant the root, which is where I have all these little things started already. And you plant it in your container at a 45 degree angle, two inches below the dirt. So that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna take this knife and attempt I probably should get a bigger knife, but this one's down here. I don't necessarily need this horseradish right now, but if it wants me to cut the top off, I'm going to do that because maybe it needs to be open like that. I'm not really sure. So that's what it looks like on the inside. Those eyes are all down here on the bottom. You can see all the little green guys coming out. Little roots starting. And it wants you to plant it at a 45. So I'm not going to put it in there. I'm going to put it in like this in the dirt, about two inches underneath. Something that I read is that it said that horseradish can quickly get out of control. So that's why I'm putting mine in a pot right now. And I'll probably keep it in a pot. And then in the fall, when I bring it in, I'll harvest it. I'll do the same thing. I will harvest part of this root and keep the other part to plant again next year. Um, I might need a bigger pot, but we're going to try it with the pot that I got and see how she goes. Okay, so here is my soil. I'm going to go ahead and kind of make a mound here in the middle. I'm going to set this in at a 45 degree angle, like it told me to.
and then I am going to, oops, sorry, cover this up. And I'm going to plant around this, and then I'm going to go ahead and add enough soil up to the top so that it is all covered up. There she is, horseradish. Brent, I love you. The proof is in this bucket. I'm growing you horseradish. Um, actually, I'm just trying to trick him into liking my garden more because things that he loves are in it. Yes. Um, okay, so project number two today, I'm going to go check on my ranunculus corms. If you remember, maybe about a month ago, probably, I pre-soaked all those ranunculus corms I got, and then I planted them to try and pre-sprout them. Two weeks later, they had not worked. They dried out more, so I um, got them soaked up again, and I put them in a darker, colder spot. So I'm going to drag those out now, and we'll see if they've done anything. Well, this doesn't look great. It's really dried out. Remember, I had two varieties, Salmon and Happy Mix. Let's really carefully hunt one of these puppies up. Look at it. It is just dried out and not growing. <sighs> All right. If you grow ranunculus, help a girl out, would ya? Uh, I think my plan right now is I am going to go ahead and get these very wet in my sink and let them drain out. So I've got really damp. See, I heard that you don't wanna let them get too damp. They can mold easily, but I think I'm just taking it too easy on them. I think they really need to soak some more. So we're gonna go ahead and soak them good, but let them drain off. And I think I'm gonna put them back in here for maybe a week or so, and then they're gonna end up just getting planted outside in buckets on my porch where they have a little protection. Bummer. I'd hope that would work out better than it did. Okay, if you grow ranunculus, or if you have any ranunculus knowledge, please let a girl know. Okay, one more project for today down here in the grow room is that I am going to plant some Mexican sunflower. They are called Tithonia. This one is called Red Torch. I got it from in here. Baker Creek. Rareseeds.com. And these can get huge huge. Um, this says here it's an annual, the golden flower of the Aztecs. Hmm. Brilliant red, orange, two to three inch flowers. They produce masses of blooms over a long season. Now this doesn't tell you this, but these get giant, not just the plants, not just the flowers. I mean, but the actual plant, I put them outside, actually outside this window on the side of the house. Um, not last year. They didn't work last year the year before, and they grew as high as my kitchen window, a story above me. So they were probably a, 10 feet tall and thick and huge, and they grew in this beautiful, beautiful, like straight up, and then they all kind of flopped over and arched over my um, sidewalk. They were gorgeous. So we're gonna go ahead, I'm gonna see if I can find some pictures um, from two years ago and insert them here. garden task for today is just to check on these peppers. They are having slower germination than usual. They're coming up, but I'm getting a little worried about some of them. Oh, look, those gypsies are coming up. And I'm probably just being a very anxious plant mom. This is probably no big deal. Some of these seeds are a bit older, but they seem to be drying out very quickly. And I think that's because I have the heater. Um, let me show you here. I've had this heater over here, and I think it's too warm for them. Not in heat, but I think that warmth is drying them out too much. They're not staying moist enough. So I'm gonna turn this heater a little bit away, and I'm gonna go ahead and water these guys in. Okay, friends, that's all my tasks for today down here in the garden. I'm gonna go ahead and water those peppers in really good. I did turn the um, space heater so it's facing away and just warm this room up instead of directly by the peppers. I'm hoping that's going to help out. And then um, I've got those ranunculus upstairs in my sink draining and I've got some horseradish root to take up to the kitchen and figure out how to save. I think I can freeze it. I don't know. We're going to find out. 
Um, that's it for gardening today. I have to go do my real day job. And then I'm going to go pick up my kids and put my mom hat on for the rest of the evening. And, uh, yeah, make some chicken. Sounds good? All right. I hope you guys have a great day. I'll see you tomorrow.